So here on the screen, you see an example of a weekly hotel report uh, from STL Global. And we can see here the focus is on, you can see on the left, uh, room occupancy, average daily rate, and revenue per available room. So those are the calculations we're going to look at shortly. So let's just have a look at this slide for a second and think about what these performance measures are telling us. So we can see the occupancy variance in the first graph, the first graphic. In the second graphic, we can see the ADR variance. And then we see the RevPAR variance. And this is by day of the week. So interestingly, we can see something is happening on Sunday. And we can also see something interesting is happening on Tuesday and Friday. So we would then probably want to look a little bit more in detail to understand what these graphics are telling us and how we need to use this information to improve our future revenue performance. Here we see another example of some statistics. This is uh, looking at UK chains this time and from hot stats. And we can again see it's focusing on occupancy, average room rate, revenue per available room or REVPAR. But also here we see TREVPAR, which is total revenue per available room. And it's also looking at GOPAR, which is gross operating profit per available room. Of course, room, we're looking at hotels, so room is the, the unit that we're trying to measure. Um, but you can replace room with many other different things and still be using the same calculations for your own business. And we'll look at those a little bit later. So here again, we're looking at uh, this year compared to last year. Um, and then trying to understand where we've seen increases and decreases. And then from that, we're going to think about, okay, how did our revenue management tactics influence those results? So I'm just looking at the ref bar because, of course, I'm interested. And we can see it's gone up slightly in Scotland. Um, it's gone up in Leeds. And it's gone up slightly in Southampton. But it's still pretty low. But of course, there we're looking at regions, massive regions. And of course, if we want to evaluate our own performance, it's useful to look, compare ourselves to those massive regions. But again, we're going to then compare ourselves to our own competitors, our own competitor set, maybe compare ourselves to another similar destination or a destination or country that we feel might be um, stealing some market share from us. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to look at our own internal measures, comparing this year to last year, this week to last week, and of course comparing our results to budget. On the next screen you can see some tourism indicators. Uh, this, is a, this, this website is in French and German, um, but it's giving us lots and lots of valuable data. If we want to really understand our tourism region, you'll have your own um, body like this one that's collecting tourist data that maybe then creates some kind of online resource that you can then get to better evaluate your performance. So here we can see there's lots of things available. If you go on this site, here's one particular graphic, which I quite like. OK, it's from 2009, but it doesn't matter. And here we can see you know, the tourism destinations are evaluating themselves based on number of room nights sold in hotels in each of the uh, minor regions of this big area of Switzerland. And of course, we can see a massive, massive um, area which is dominating the whole map of the region. And that's, that's, of course, the area of Zermatt. So Zermatt is, of course, one of the most successful regions in Switzerland. And who would they compare themselves to, I wonder? Anyway, that's just to give you an idea of where you might be able to find some uh, data, if you, of course, don't know already. If you have some other sources of data that you'd like to share with the rest of the group, please do post a link to these in the discussion forum. Thank you. So key performance indicators. These help define, measure, and track progress towards strategic goals. And of course, the strategic goals are those linked to revenue management in our case. Collectively, they can be used to create measurements to review the entire business performance. So as you know, this week's quiz is going to be based on performance matrix but it's really going to be based on calculation. So you're going to have lots of different examples and exercises, and you'll need to calculate the answer. So please take great care to evaluate all of the formulas that I'm going to give you so that you'll be in a good position to do very well in this week's quiz. 
So we're going to be looking at internal metrics. So we'll be looking, thinking about how we can evaluate our departmental profitability report, perhaps productivity um, in terms of sales productivity. We'll be looking at our sales mix. We'll evaluate our occupancy. Uh, we'll be evaluating customer spend, for example, on ancillary sales, on those extras that are not part of the core revenue, and maybe some other customer-related ratios. And it's all about looking, when, when it's about internal metrics, we're looking at what we actually did, comparing that to budget, and then calculating a variance, uh, the difference between actual and budget. We also, of course, should be comparing ourselves to a similar period in the past, and that might be last week, it might be last month, but it could be, for example, last year, if it's, for example, a Christmas period or an Easter period. So the first calculation you're going to be, you should be able to calculate is evaluating the sales mix. So how much of the sales was made in each of the different sales areas of your business. So in hotels, for example, we might have room sales, food sales, beverage sales, and retail sales. We might also have spa sales. So we'll take each of the sales made in those different departments and divide that by the total global sales figures times 100 and that will give us the sales mix percentage for that individual department. The second calculation of course you should be able to calculate is the occupancy of your business. Um, in the case of a hotel it's going to be room sold divided by rooms available times 100 to get a percentage. Um, in a restaurant it might be seats sold divided by seats available um, etc. We'll also be looking at average rate per inventory unit sold. So in a hotel, we'll be looking at average room rate. So we'll take room sales divided by room sold, and this will give us a monetary amount. Of course, if we're looking at businesses in different parts of the world, we'll have to make sure that our average room rate is calculated in a com common currency so that we can actually properly bench our mark ourselves against others. If we're in a tourist attraction, we might want to look at the average ticket price. So then we would take ticket sales divided by number of visitors. And if we're in a restaurant or a bar, we might want to calculate sales per customer. And here you see the example of that calculation, beverage sales divided by number of customers to get an average amount per customer, an average customer spend. Then, of course, we have our rev pow calculation, uh, which is revenue per available inventory unit. And you've already seen that. Um, related to hotels. So in hotels, it's revenue per available room or total revenue per available room. And all we need to do, um, based on the business that we're in, is to substitute, substitute room with whatever else it is we want to measure the performance of. So here are some examples. In restaurants, we do revenue per available seat hour. In airlines, revenue per available mile, kilometer per seat. We dolphin attraction, for example, in Florida, they do revenue per available dolphin session. Cableways could be looking at, not many do this at the moment, be looking at revenue per available ski trail um, meter, perhaps. Conference facilities might be looking at revenue per available day part or revenue per available square meter. And a spa might look at revenue per available massage session or even square meter of swimming pool and leisure area, perhaps. So. It really depends on the type of business you have and what it is you'd like to measure. Another thing we need to evaluate is to make sure that the increases in revenue that are being generated through the revenue management tactics are actually dropping down to the bottom line. Now, this was a mistake that airlines made in the very beginning, is that they were just focusing on revenue and not evaluating if that increase in revenue was also increasing their profit. And that caused quite a few of them to go bankrupt, I think, but I might be wrong. So don't quote me on that. Anyway, we need to, in any case, understand flow through. So how much of the increase in revenue actually flowed through to the gross operating profit? And there you see the calculation on the screen. You can also Google this calculation if you want to see more of it and some more examples of it as well. We also want to calculate, we can calculate, as you saw previously, gross operating profit per available unit. And we can take gross operating profit divided by total available units. We can do the same thing with contribution. So that's the selling price minus the variable cost. So we can take contribution 
per available unit as well. So we can do a similar calculation there to evaluate really if our revenue management tactics are helping us improve our profits. So those are the internal metrics and of course we can compare ourselves to others as well but we can also do some external metrics using the benchmark reports that are available um, in the region. So the first thing we'll be looking at is market penetration index and here you see the calculation. So how occupancy compares to the, our occupancy compares to the occupancy of the competitor set. Average rate index, how does our average rate or average price compare to the average price achieved by the competitor set. And revenue generation index, how does our revenue per available unit compare to that generated by our competitors. So an ARI, MPI or RGI of more than one indicates that the business is receiving more than its fair share. And for more reading on this, there's a nice link. Uh, there's a chapter in the X Hotels Revenue Management book that can give you lots more examples. So here we see an example. We can see the result of those calculations. We can see the MPI is 0.95, so it didn't quite achieve one. Uh, we see the ARI is 1.09, so we did better than our competitors the average of our competitors anyway, and the RGI is 1.05, so overall we did better than competitors. So based on that, what strategies could you adopt? What would you think about doing in order to improve your overall performance? And what other information would you perhaps need in order to make an informed commercial decision? Just think about this for a moment, and perhaps look at this next slide and think about what kind of commercial strategies could you deploy to increase the market penetration index, for example, in our hotel, or increase the average rate index? And the idea here would be, of course, overall, to increase the revenue generation index. So have a think about that for a minute, press pause, and then we'll discuss strategies. So, Hopefully you came up with some creative ideas regarding how to increase your market penetration index and how to increase the average rate index. Here we see some suggestions on the screen, but hopefully you came up with some of your own as well. So do send me uh, some of those that perhaps don't appear on the screen or post them to the, the discussion forum so that we can all share all of our ideas. And if you can think of some for a tourist destination, that would be even better. So the last slide here on the screen this week is looking at lots of websites that you can go to to think about how businesses can benchmark their performance. There's some articles um, and lots of different resources there for you. And these are going to be posted underneath the video as well, so you can just click through and go and explore those uh, resources. So thank you very much for listening to this video today. And I'd like to thank Total Revenue Solutions and Better Revenue who have contributed some of the slides to this week's course. So thank you to them for supporting Fluful and, of course, uh, offering some of their resources to you Fluful followers or Fluflies or Flufalites. We're not really sure yet, so hopefully we'll be able to define your the way we call you. So that's the end of this week and I look forward to seeing you next week's videos which are going to be looking at more focusing on the bottom line, optimizing profit and we'll be discussing all of those ethical conflicts that arise when we try to deploy our revenue management tactics. So see you next week. Thank you. Don't forget the quiz. Bye-bye.